Hello everybody and welcome back to the Daisy Regrowth Project. Um, I know we're all trying to get back to normal now um, and we are slowly uh, but I wonder if you can cast your minds back to the beginning of lockdown uh, when there wasn't much traffic on the roads and everybody kept saying aren't the birds noisy? <laughs> um, I live on a main road and so I really noticed the difference. Um, so I started hearing birds that I had never heard before um, and it was like you know, I was living in a tropical forest, not on a main road. It was wonderful. Chris Packham said that it was a combination of things. Uh, it was a reduction in the noise pollution. There wasn't any traffic and there wasn't any aeroplanes so that we could hear the birds more clearly. But he said also people had the time to notice it more um, and they became more interested. People all over the world uh, started to um, record the dawn chorus on their phones um, and a number of artists and scientists started to collect all of these recordings and put them together uh, to form the first global uh, sound map and, uh, of the dawn chorus. Um, and you can go to this website now and type in a country and listen to the dawn chorus in that country, which is really wonderful. Uh, so, shall we try it? Shall we type in, I don't know, Australia and have a listen? Like all um, dawn choruses, the birds start singing when the sun rises and as they wake up one by one they start singing um, until they're all singing together. This sounds very different to our on chorus in the UK. And this was um, recorded by a, an ordinary person just like you and me um, in Adelaide in Australia. Beautiful. Now, lots of you have been telling me that the birds you know, were waking you up in the morning. So I thought for our virtual woodland um, and to help us remember all of this time uh, that we would make some very noisy birds. Okay, so uh, first thing you will need is um, a box or some card. Um, and I'm using uh, an empty cereal box. Uh, cut out, um, uh, you know, divide your box into two and then cut off the side bits so that you've got a nice flat bit of card. And what we're going to do is use this as a template for our bird. Now you can see the size of it. It's um, about an, the size of an A4 piece of paper. I think that we want to make our bird uh, quite wide and deep. So we're going to try and use up all of this card. Um, and you'll need a pencil or a pen. I'm using a black line, a uh, black uh, fine liner, so that you can see. Let's draw a straight line in the middle of the paper, and then from the straight line, I'm going to do a big, great smile, and it actually makes a big semicircle or a bowl-like um, image, doesn't it? Now. That's the body of our bird. 
Okay, and now I want you to do two dots uh, on the corner of your body, about that far in from uh, at the edge of the corner. Okay, two dots. Now that's just a guide for us. I'm not going to do its tail. So uh, another two dots at the top, uh, a nice distance away, so it's a nice long tail. Um, and then you're going to draw a, a line to join those two dots up. Uh, and you can join those at the top as well. But what we're going to do is a little V-shape like that uh, to separate the tail feathers. Then you could just draw a little curved line between the body and the tail uh, just to make it nice and smooth. Um, by the way, it doesn't matter what you're drawing because you're going to cover this up any minute anyway with some collage. So it doesn't make, matter if you make mistakes and you adapt your drawing like I am. That's absolutely fine. So you've got a nice chunky tail. Then we're going to have a nice long neck. And if you draw a U-shape or an upside down U-shape, um, and then we're just going to join that into the body as well and make that, that a bit of a smooth uh, joining, just like that. Now we want to make the bird look like he's really singing his head off uh, loudly. So we want two long thin triangles on the top of his head uh, so it looks like an open beak, so that it looks like he's really singing loudly. And now the wing, and I want to draw it quite large, but I don't want to draw it on my bird because we're going to stick it on separately. So in the corner, I'm going to draw a petal shape, nice and big, or about, you know, the size for your bird. Um, and it's like a teardrop, or a petal shape, or a, a raindrop, um, or a circle with a pointy end. That's the kind of shape you want. Now cut out everything, um, get your scissors um, and carefully cut out. Be careful not to hurt yourself. Um, if you need help, perhaps you could ask a carer or your mum to help you with this part. Um, and uh, so cut out the wing separately and then cut out your bird. And as I say, this isn't the actual bird, it's the template for the bird. That means it's like a little map for the bird. Um, it's the shape of your bird. I'm going to use this to draw around on your collage in a little while. So I'm carefully cutting out, very careful with the beak. round bodies. Note that we haven't got any legs, we'll put some legs on later, otherwise he looks a bit like a duck, doesn't he? But yes, this is our template, please put it to one side. Okay, for the next part, the collage part, um, you'll need a piece of paper about an A4 size, um, big enough to cover your bird, need some glue, glue stick, and you will need your scissors, um, and then you need to go and find some magazines. Any, any magazines, uh, the more colourful the better, um, uh, but if it belongs to somebody else, um, please ask permission because we're going to be uh, cutting out some pictures. Alright, so I've got a home and garden. Um, a nice glossy magazine and I've got a, another magazine too um, and uh, I'm going to look through it looking for uh, loud bright colours or textures um, 
something that is going to really um, look loud and, and bright and, and colourful. So uh, like these balloons, um, they kind of look noisy, don't they? Now the greens don't look so noisy, but I'll just take them just in case. Um, and I'm just going to go through the magazine, just looking for the colour. Oh, look, that's a nice lime green. Um, oh, and some nice texture on the carpet, actually. That's that's really nice pattern there. That could look really nice. I'll tear it out. You can tear or you can use your scissors. Um, I'm just going to take off the bits that don't need, like those white edges. Don't need those white edges. So let's cut those off and put it to the side. Um, and I'm going to go through the magazine, keep collecting all my different colours, like, oh, that's that's quite pretty, sort of triangles and circles, a bit like our Kandinsky there. Let's keep that. Um, oh, that's nice. Oh, and I really like that one. Let's have that. Now, the other thing you need is to look for some, you know, go through the magazine looking for bright colours. The brighter the better, the bright colours and bright textures. Um, and then you need something in contrast for your wing. You're looking for black and whites for your wing um, because you need the wing to stand out and be different from the body of your bird. So um, look for black and white uh, textures as well, like this is perfect for my wing. Um, and it already looks like a collage because it's like in stripes and different patterns. So I'm definitely going to have that page for my wing. You could, of course, have uh, lots of different ones for your wing and do a, a, a collage in black and white. Right, for this next bit, you'll need your piece of paper. Um, doesn't matter which way round you have it. Um, I'm using a bit of glass underneath but you could use perhaps an old newspaper or a magazine just to make sure you don't get any glue on your tabletop um, and you want to uh, maybe tear um, up parts of uh, your images that you've collected your lovely colours that you've collected into as big or as small pieces as you like um, and start sticking them down on the paper um, and really do it quite randomly but what you want to do is to get some really good colours next to each other so that they clash as I say and make noise. So I'm just uh, putting some bits together. Overlap them, don't want any white bits of paper showing. Tear them, scissor cut them, it's up to you. As long as they overlap a bit, so. Oh, let's have that bit because that's really nice and loud. Now, where's my bird going to go? I'm just going to have a look. Oh, okay. Hmm. See, some of it won't be covered. So you, yes, my bird's quite small compared to my piece of paper. The reason I'm sticking it down on the piece of paper is because I want it to be, you know, I want there to be a bit of a surprise element. If I was to stick it straight onto the bird, I wouldn't have a, what I, I call my surprise element. So what I'm doing is just doing it quite randomly on my paper, the sticking, but uh, bearing in mind, thinking about where my bird is going to go. Nice bit of red there with some writing on I quite like that so there's my finished page full of collage I'm happy with it but I could go on um, if there was any areas that I thought was a little bit boring I could stick some more color over the top or make some of the pieces smaller by um, tearing them up and sticking them on the top or using more text or whatever I wanted to do but have fun with yours um, and uh, let's clear up and get ready for the next stage. Put your lid on. Right, now grab your templates. 
choose where you want it to go. I wanted those yellow bits for its beak, so I've placed it so that he's just his those triangles of his beak are in the yellow. And I'm carefully drawing around the template with my pencil so I can easily cut it out. Okay. And there it is, there's the outline of it. Right. Now carefully cut it out of your collage. of those tail feathers. And as you can see, my bird is looking very loud. <laughs> you couldn't miss that if you saw it in the forest. Bright, colourful, and noisy. There he is. Now I need to do the wing, which is this is why I wanted to do the wing separately and not draw it onto the bird because I want the wing to really stand out. And uh, don't forget, we kind of was looking for something contrasting. For his wing, and I found this lovely um, black and white uh, piece in my magazine, which already looked a little bit collage, didn't it? Stripes are good. So you can find several black and white pieces. It doesn't need to be all in one lump like this. You can do some collage for it, just like we did with the body of the bird. And there, you can see it stands out that way. And you can glue that on. Don't need to, to have any card underneath it, just the page or just the paper is fine if it's not a collage. There. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to make a stand for our bird or a greeting card. So get a piece of paper. Uh, this is quite flimsy, this paper. So if you've got card, that would be a lot better. In portrait uh, position, fold the paper down in half. Line up your edges to make it as accurate as possible. Um, and fold it, make sure the crease is nice and strong. Um, and then you can lift the flap up, it becomes a greetings card if you wanted, um, and most importantly, a stand for our bird. So make sure it can stand up, because it's paper, it's a bit flimsy. Um, so card would have been an awful lot better, but as you can see, it works. Um, so if paper is the only thing that you've got, that's fine. Um, right, okay. So um, get your bird and we're going to place it on, um, on the card, on the paper um, and we're going to tilt it so that his neck is stretched up uh, like he's really singing and you need to leave lots of room for his legs. So can you see I've kind of tilted him up so that his head is above his tail, like that, um, and I'm just uh, try and place him the best way I can, but I really want him to be looking like his head is stretched up and he's singing um, as loud as he possibly can. So I think that's about it like that. So you can see I've rocked him, uh, you know, he's not straight on, but he's slightly tilted. Glue a bit at the back. 
don't need to glue his head or his wings or his tail because they are outside. Okay, again, get that position. Can you see that the tail is sort of um, going off to the corner of the car? His head stretched up. That's lovely. And his wings not stuck down so that it's a little bit loose. That's lovely. I'm pleased with that. Okay, put the lid on your glue so it doesn't dry out. Okay, so now we are going to draw his legs. Um, I want you to use something really strong like a, a fine liner or a black fine liner so that they really stand out. And draw two simple legs and feet. Um, I'm just drawing two straight lines down and three little lines off of them for his feet just make them a little bit thicker and it's just as simple as that and that's something for him to hang on to the branch that I shall be putting him on and there and there he is standing up um, there's uh, something else that we've got to do and uh, that's his eye. Um, I found, uh, I don't know if you can see this properly, um, just a bit of white and gold from the magazine. Uh, as long as it's very light coloured, draw a nice big uh, circle for his eye and cut it out and draw a black pupil in the middle of it. Um, and then stick it in place um, to finish him off. And doesn't he look fine? That's lovely. Can you please um, lay it down, maybe on a piece of white paper so that I can see it clearly, and photograph him and send it to me. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Um, for taking part. I'm really excited about these birds. They're going to look fabulous in a tree um, and I look forward to receiving it. Thanks. Bye.